So welcome uh, again for people who already saw me yesterday uh, at my second session. Um, my name is Julien Stroecker. As you can hear, I'm going to do the, the same job this morning. People always on stage from France. Uh, so I'm originally from France, born in, in, in Montpellier in France, living in Montreal now, Canada, and working for Microsoft Seattle. <laughs> um, I have a lot of fun working for Microsoft, so I like to say that I'm paying to have fun with open source technology and mostly focus on DevOps uh, technologies. Um, I'm part of a division called CSC for Customer Success uh, Engagement, I think. <laughs> we just changed, uh, we just have a re reorganization, we changed the name, so that's why. But um, the idea is to engage with customer who is, who is using Azure and give uh, to kind of to be kind of this feedback loop with the engineering team so engaging with partner and customer and give the feedback to the engineering team uh, mainly focus on open source technology so it's a lot of fun uh, i really enjoy it um so yeah today i'm going to talk about auto scaling mesos cluster um so the agenda for this uh, 45 minutes i think a uh, little bit of content Concepts. Um, I'm going to share the code actually, so a few slides and most of the like, like I like to 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 do all my presentation. It's most of the presentation will be like live demo and code. Uh, so few slides basically, and then uh, we're going to switch to the to the presentation to the demo. Um, so a little bit of concept. Like I said, uh, because I'm. Most of my time at Microsoft, uh, I'm engaging and doing code with customers and partners. Um, one of them asked me a way to do auto-scaling uh, on DCOS and on Azure. Uh, so the code I'm going to show you, and so yeah, the code I'm going to show you, it's part of that. It's kind of proof of concept. I cannot share the code of the customer for sure, but I try to extract that and play with that and to share that to make that open source. Uh, so it's from a POC. Um, the idea behind us is to leverage any cloud, private or public, and be able to auto scale. So I don't really like this world because auto scale comes in magic. And the problem, or I mean, yeah, the problem of the auto scaling, there is no magic way to do auto scaling, because I'm pretty sure that if there is one, why is not in the product today? Why is not on the, on DCOS? On I mean, on Mesos. Uh, Auto scaling, it's a huge, huge, uh, not problem, but it's a huge aspect. You can scale depending CPU, GPUs, RAM, throughput, or networking, or whatever. So it's a custom, custom uh, scenario for each, um, so each case, actually. So that one, uh, because we want to keep that simple, 45 minutes again, um, I'm going to just share my vision about this code and take the easier and sim uh, simpler scenario. So, yeah. I like to do the joke that because I'm working at Microsoft, I have to do some marketing slides. <laughs> and again, that's the same that I presented yesterday, uh, just to give you a little concept. I don't know if here people are using Azure in the room. Yes, no? Wow, one. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So I, th I think it's good just to, to explain that thing. On Azure, we have this service called uh, ACS, which stands for Azure Container Services. It's just a way to deploy any orchestrator, any um, yeah, orchestrator, so Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, and uh, DCOS. Um, the cool thing is, for example, for DCOS, we're working close with Mesosphere. And when you deploy a DCOS cluster, it's a cluster uh, backed and maintained by um, I mean, supported by Microsoft and Mesosphere, so on the best practices, and same thing for the other provider. So we call that ACS, Azure Container Services. We have a bunch of different services on Azure. We just announced a new one called AKS, stands for, uh, for Azure Kubernetes Services. Um, but yeah, we have a bunch, bunch of services uh, around uh, containerization. So that's ACS, and on the other way, we also have an open source one. So when you're deploying and using SES here, basically it's the Microsoft way. You can go on the portal or using the CLI, click next, next. You have a bunch of different uh, interface. So this is my cluster. I want three master, five nodes. This is the side I want, and so on and so on. 
And that's it. So we're doing all the magics for you. But if you want a custom configuration, like including VNet integration, you want to use GPU, so a specific version of DCOS, Kubernetes, and so on, uh, we just open source also the, the engine behind this magic on the portal, on SES. So it, we call that SES engine. So if you want a custom deployment, uh, you can still do that using SES engine. Make sense? So basically, how it works with the SES engine, you just have to define, so I, I try to split it, but it's just a 50 lines of JSON file. So you just define uh, the structure that you want to deploy on Azure. So here, uh, you have some mandatory options. So I want to use DCOS, so you can also specify the version if you want. I want one master. And then you, you can specify I want a bunch of different nodes and your public key, and that's it. You just pass that to SES Engine. It's going to generate and talk to the API behind the scene and then deploy everything, all the VMs, the networking, the storage, and so on. Um, this is what actually I'm going to use for my demo. And the thing that I want to insist here, um, I want to insist on the fact that I'm using custom node, uh, uh, custom label, sorry, for Mesos. So I'm deploying three different agent pools, so basically three stack of nodes, if I can say that. So three times, um, uh, sorry, uh, three times the, the, um, the this VM, which is a standard D2V2. It's two CPU on Azure, so two CPU for Geese of RAM. So I want three times that one. And for that one, I want you to also include the tag, the mesostat, the constraint um, for workload uh, with the value stateful. We're going to understand that later. Same thing for stateless. And I also have the public node somewhere here, three public nodes. So the cool thing with that, you can change the parameters, pass that to SES Engine, and then it's going to deploy that for you. Um, again, think about that, 45 minutes, so now 40 minutes or 30 minutes, the simpler, easier scenario, right? So we're going to focus only on the stateless uh, workload, because we're going to, I mean, what I want first is to easily auto-scale uh, without any storage constraint, for example. We're not going to start to play with stateful scenario, right? Here, the idea is, OK, I want to be able to easily scale my CPU, for example. Or I want easily, uh, I want you to scale when I need more CPUs to deploy my application. I want you to scale <coughs> on that, uh, that matrix. Make sense? So then, when it's done, pass that to Azure. And Azure doing the magic for you, like I said. At the end, it's just a bunch of VMs, right? Master, nodes, like I said, storage. La so if you're not using Azure, it's the same thing on AWS. And GC, basically. Um, and one thing interesting here, you remember, I'm supposed to have three uh, agent pool, which on Azure, we call that the VM scale set. So a bunch of VM together, let's say that. Um, and here, I tag one with stateful, one with stateless, and we suppose I have a third one for the uh, public agent, right? So on Azure is that thing here. I don't know if you can see, but it's as we call the VM scale set. So one for DCOS agent public, another one for SF for stateful. Another one for stateless. So I just click here for the stateless one. And per default, I have three instances running on that one. That's normal because I ask for three, right? So this is what I have on my um, deployment right now. Now it came to the code. So uh, I think I share on the slide the URL of the code of my autoscaler. So <coughs> basically, it's a Python tool. Let's say that. I'm using Click. I don't know if you heard about this framework. Click is just a cool frame Python framework to allow you to do CLI uh, frameworks. So this is the way that I code that. So here, um, when I start to code that, I say, OK, I don't want to do something just 100% compliant and related to Azure. I want to be able for people, if they want, to also use the same logic for any cloud provider, public or private, right? So <coughs> the idea is. I'm using a provider, so in my case, Azure. And then I deploy a bunch of nodes, so one for stateless, one for stateful, and could be different constraints. But again, let's focus only on stateless. And here, on that example, I have four. I want to be able automatically to scale for four, for plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two. Depends on the demand. I want to scale up and scale down. Make sense? So what I'm going to do, I say, OK, fine. It's not really complicated. I have to find a way to ask Mesos how many resources 
I have, how many resources I want, how many I'm consuming right now, and then do the math and talk to the provider first. And I mean, my class provider and the provider is going to say, OK, because you're using Azure, this is the class that you want to, to, to have to use. And you're going to say to Azure, OK, scale up or scale down. Um, and then it comes also the constraint. You remember on my deployment, I also specify uh, some constraints. So I have one for workload and workload as stateless and stateful. Uh, why the constraint? So when I'm doing the math in term, uh, the math on terms of CPU consumption, I want to do that only on the stateless one, right? We don't want to play with the stateful uh, right now. So on the code, this is how it works. Uh, it's really, really straightforward. Again, it's kind of shitty code, but it works. <laughs> uh, I have a cluster class who's talking to a provider class, and that class talks to different provider. In my case, it's Azure, right? So when you start the CLI, you just have a switch option for provider. In my case, it's Azure. And because Azure is going to, he knows that we're using Azure. And all the logic to scale up and scale down for Azure, it's here. And yeah, that's really, really straightforward. That guy's going to talk to Azure. And then when he's come back, he's going to redo the math. It's just a loop, actually. I have a timer every minute, or so every 10 minutes, for example. Ask Mesos. Uh, I want to ask Mesos the consumption usage. Do the math again and then again send a request to my provider. Make sense? So let's do the demo. Yeah, OK. So first, let me, OK, I'll put the link here. So that's the code. Like I said, three class, uh, classes, cluster provider and provider Azure. And I have my main file, Python file, actually. And here, I, ho I have all the options. Again, I'm using the click framework. So this is all the options that I have to specify. So I'm not going to go deep on the code, uh, but <coughs> Uh, at least I already explained how it's supposed to work. If you want us to have more explanation, actually, I try to describe how it works. Um, and this is all the switch and all the options I have. So for example, uh, I have to specify the provider name. That one is mandatory. Here I'm specifying that I want to Azure. That's the only one that I implemented right now. If you want to implement it for AWS, GC, or what, uh, whatever, you're more than welcome to do pull request. Uh, the timer, so per default, it's every minute is going to poke the API, the Mesos API. But if I want to have the 10 minutes, 20 minutes latency, I can also reduce or uh, reduce that. Uh, here, I call that this the cap, so the trigger. When I'm doing the math, so for example, if you're consuming 80% I have 80 of the CPU consumed by my application, uh, this is at the trigger, the 80 percentage, that is going to scale up. So I can, I can change that. When I'm going to reach 50%, for example, of my consumption, I can trigger the scale up, or 60 or 75, for example. That's the, this option here. Same thing for the scale down, OK? Um, if you want to implement the scale down, actually. I can also have a uh, specified uh, limitation, right? You can scale, 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 but maybe you don't want to scale 200 or 1,000 nodes. So if I want to stop the tool to scale at maximum 20, and something for the minimum, three. Then for Azure, um, if you, I mean, only one person using Azure here, but the way to talk to the Azure API is we call that the SPN. Uh, we stand for, for service principal. Basically, just a key, password, subscription ID, and so on. So for information to be able to talk to the Azure API, so trigger action like scale, add VMs, reduce VM, and so on. Um, the location, and so on. So that's. Last option here is really specific to the provider that we're using. So if you want to implement AWS, for example, I'm pretty sure that for AWS, you also have specific um, options that you have to specify. So it's something that you can add. Same thing for GC and so on. So this is how it works. So I have my cluster here, deploy. And again, if you remember, one master, th uh, three times, three different nodes uh, for the public one, uh, public agent and uh, stateful and stateless, right? So for example, if I'm going on that one, that first host name, if I'm going on details, you can see here on workload, 
I don't know if you can see on the back. Can you see? Yeah. So that one, for example, is a stateful node. So we're not supposed to touch that one here. We can if you want, but like I say, let's keep that simple. Uh, same thing for the second one. So here, the way that I deploy that on Azure, I have different subnet here. So I know that the, that one, uh, one, two, three, it's supposed to be the stateful one. Normally, the next uh, next one, that one's supposed to be the stateless, actually. So yeah, we have the stateless uh, node here, and so on, right? So I already deploy an application, actually. That's my beautiful Hello World application here. And if I just show you the marathon file here, what I specify, again, let me know if you can see, but I deployed that one only on the stateless. So it's just a web application, right? No storage, it's not a stateful application. That's the one that I want to handle. I want to be able to scale any stateless workload. Because when I start with Mesos and DCOS, I'm pretty sure, it's, I, I mean, I guess it was the same thing for you. Um, when you don't really understand that consumption stuff, right? When you have to specify how many CPUs you need, how many uh, memory you need, and sometimes you deploy, deploy, and then you can see waiting. Yeah, what do you wait? I mean, why were you waiting? I have resources available, right? But yeah, when you say, I want one CPU for this application, even if you're not consuming the CPU, it's going to block the CPU for this application, right? Um, and here, I'm running three um, three instances on my web. So again, back to my configuration here. That one, it just, in terms of consumption, I'm asking for one CPU uh, for the application. That means I'm consuming three CPUs. Again, on my nodes, on my stateless node, are three times, as we call a D2 V2 on Azure, which is one VM, one D2, it's a two CPUs. So I mean, I have the total that I have, it's, come on guys, six. Right? So I'm basically consuming 50% of my CPUs here. Right? So let's launch my awesome uh, autoscaler. So here, it's supposed to work like I, I described. So I specify all my parameters here. Uh, so then I'm crashing all the logs for um, debug reason, uh, so it just triggers and detects that it's Azure, the timer is 10 seconds, the scale-up cap, it's 80, so that means that when we're going to achieve 80% of consumption, this is way, uh, when it's going to trigger the scale-up, same thing for the scale-down, uh, maximum node is 20, minimum is 3. Uh, the endpoint I'm going to um, reach, actually that's interesting, uh, this is where all the magic happen. Basically I'm curling that endpoint here, if you don't know that, this is where I'm grabbing all the resources. So when I'm doing that here, on the leader of Mesos slash slaves, I have all the resources from the slave, right? And basically, I'm parsing this JSON file. Because that one, from that one, I can see uh, the CPUs available, the CPU consumed, and so on and so on. Um, so back to my thing here. And then a bunch of credential information. And then every 10 seconds, is going to proc the API and going to check the consumption. So you remember the scale-up uh, cap is 80%. I'm consuming 50%. No magic here, right? So let's scale to one more here. Let's see if it works correctly. I'm scaling to four. And we have 66, right? If I'm scaling one more, we're supposed to still be good. Oh, 83. So now, scale up kicked. So now it's calling the provider. The provider is calling, so the provider knows that we're using Azure, so the provider is going to call the provider Azure classes and it's going to scale. So the way it works on Azure, um, you remember I talked about the VM scale set. So it's supposed to well, to scale the correct one, which is the DCOS dash Mesos SL for stateless, and we're supposed to scale. See if I'm doing instances, so it's creating instances here, and it's going to scale. 
And the cool thing with the MCL set uh, is going to bootstrap the Mesos agent and everything, everything. And then after a few minutes, uh, we're supposed to see uh, three more VMs here with the stateless tag and so on. And then it's going to be able to deploy. So here we just at 80, but the idea is let's say we scale to something like 10. Is going to deploy. Uh, we have six instances, right? So it's waiting for more. So the idea is going to scale uh, to three other nodes. So that means I'm going to have, or two, on, uh, two other nodes, sorry. So I'm going to have uh, four CPUs available, four more CPUs available, and then it's going to be able to deploy my application until 10, and so on. So it's an easy way, actually. Um, to scale, again, stateless application, right? Just web app. And the cool thing here, um, it's supposed to also let the scale down. So when we're going to reach like under 20% consumption, it's going to do the same, uh, the opposite actually. It's going to scale down to uh, from six or eight, I don't remember how many we're supposed to have, to two less and so on and so on, right? So it's just a cheap way to uh, save money on <laughs> cloud provider, right? And again, stateless application. Um, like I said, auto scaling is very complicated. Um, I don't know if you're about that. Microsoft, we work with a company called uh, OpenAI. Um, uh, it was more on Kubernetes, but just the story about that. It's we developed their own uh, way to um, auto scale GPU training. So OpenAI. Um, I'm pretty sure you heard about that. So the player, the, the guys who play Dota 2, and a machine beats the best player in the world at that game. So, um, and yeah, everything was hosted on Azure, but the story about that, we developed their own uh, auto-scaling model uh, based on a bunch of different scenarios, like networking, uh, storage, and everything, everything. And I asked the engineering team why we didn't like not open source, but include that in the product because it's a good story. It's supposed to be cool also, and maybe gonna help other provide uh, other customer. It was too custom for for the needs, and this is where we engage the conversation about that. We also have the same kind of code for uh, Swarm and Kubernetes um, on open source side actually, but again, it's still stuck to one kind of resources. On that case, it's CPUs. But maybe you want to scale for GPUs, for example. GPUs make sense also because it's really, really expensive. So maybe we want to be able to scale GPUs, launch the training, right, and then shut down all the VM. Um, so yeah, that's just uh, the concept and the idea of that. So let's see. I tried to talk to just to, <laughs> to wait before the. OK, it's still scaling. Let's see on Azure. So it's creating, running. So I guess now it's bootstrapping like all the Mesos and DCOS uh, bits. Um, as you maybe not notice, it's the way that I did that for, for now, it's just a Docker uh, code. It's really ugly, running on a master, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, it should be really easy to push that and deploy that on a cluster. Um, and the fun thing that also that I did, I also create a universe package. So normally, yeah. So basically, here on the package, uh, it's basically the same thing that is going to ask you for the service, I mean, the provider name, the scale threshold, and so on and so on. For now, we only have just Azure. But uh, it's the beginning uh, of the way to run that inside DCOS. For now, it's, again, Docker on the master, really ugly. But I'm pretty confident that it, sh it should be able to, to work also on the inside the cluster. Um, Let's see what we have here. OK. I'm going to wait anyway. Do you have any question in the meantime? Who is doing auto scaling right now on this OS? OK. Which way doing that? Also custom code, I guess? Or OK. Sorry? OK. Based on, uh, so uh, you're, they say they're running in their own uh, code, right, to, to auto scale? Based on what? Still based on resources available on the cluster? or? Uh, yeah, it's based on um, we all scale like services and clusters. Okay. Dependent on like services we scale on a metric that the service owner asks for, and clusters then we 
scale based on s CPUs. I okay. Think? Yeah. Well, yeah, we, ch we, we choose CPU and memory and choose whatever's worse. Yeah. Yeah, G scan, okay. Um, but it's still pretty dumb. Um, yeah, it, it's tricky, right? Because um, you, you get into this situation where you're tracking a lot more things than just CPU and memory. Oh, like yeah. In, in Marathon, for example, like what defines whether a task is waiting or not depends on like whether it can get an offer with all the things it needs. And those could be CPU, mem, GPU, but they can also be like attributes. So it could be like, um, tags for a specific OS or tags for um, a specific region or something. So yeah, our autoscaler is still kind of dumb. It it will do handle CPU memory or other things like that where we can just like scale on the worst one. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. That, uh, and that's also a good point. Uh, why people use it? I mean, one of the reasons we were using cloud, public cloud actually, is to be able to also to scale on different regions, right? And sometimes you want to scale in different region, not only on uh, my case, West Europe. Uh, so it's also maybe it's also a good point that uh, something that you want to watch. Um, and again, just not CPU. If you check the code, it's only maybe 200 line of code. It's really really uh, simple. But again, the idea of the session because it end of the last day, right? Uh, just to share again, just to give some ideas. And I, I, the fun thing, I, I didn't find any open source code about that. So I, I thought this uh, could be fun just to at least publish something and people can start from that. Because in my case, was the case with my customer uh, to start from that. And they kind of did the same thing, uh, but custom, they not use my code. I, I mean, that was the deal, right? But they're doing that on OpenStack and on Azure. So the, pu the private cloud that they have using OpenStack and they're using Azure on the public one. Yes, so our code is open source, um, but it, like, okay. you, like you said, it's a very specific problem to your, your organization. Yeah. Okay. Um, ours supports AWS. Um, I mean, people would be free to try and use it, but whether they would get it working um, without our infrastructure is, is questionable, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, Th thanks for sharing. So yeah, in the meantime, yeah, yeah the, in the back there. In the meantime, I have a new guy here. No, that's not the correct one. Yeah, it's, it's coming, actually. It's coming. Uh, yeah, in the back, question? Uh, wait for the mic, yeah. And please share, guys. Like I said, it's, it, it could be just, if you want to share something about the topics, that was also the idea why um, Mesosphere asked me to do this talk, because I start and engage on that topic, but the idea is also to share, and if we have like multiple feedback, we can also talk with them, with Mesosphere, uh, about the, on the topics, right? So, so yeah, question? Yeah, my question was, uh, rela um, you, are, you are now uh, handling uh, stateless uh, stuff, but you are also doing uh, another thing, which is uh, partitioning your cluster into two parts, actually. Yeah. So, Meaning that, okay, it might be uh, interesting for if you have very, very large uh, stateless uh, load and you want to split your cluster into two, but uh, sometimes it's more maybe mixed than that, or uh, do you have any ideas about yeah. uh, how? Uh, so, yeah, that's a good point here. It's really, really straightforward reading one tag and just do the math on that. Actually, on the, on the repo, I think it's published. Let me check. Yeah, feature resource tracker. So it's another branch. So when I was motivated, I started this, this thing. Uh, it was kind of, it's kind of the V2 on that. So be able to track all the tags that you want to watch, actually. So just not one, but be able to say, I want to watch like CPU or MEM or CPU and MEM, CPU, GPU, but also I want you to tag like, um, so the, 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 I want to check the tags or the stateless one, but also that tag, so maybe on that way you can combine, I mean, that's just uh, something I have in mind, right? But you can combine, okay, that node or VM or uh, VM scale set or whatever is gonna add a stateless tag, but also, I don't know, GPU tag, or you can have custom tag, right? And do the, the math also on that one if you want. Yeah, but my point is more <coughs> about, uh, in order to do that, you have to have strict conditions regarding uh, resource allocation on the Mesos cluster. For instance, no stateful node uh, no uh, stateful um, application ah. will install on a stateless node. Otherwise, when you uh, 
when you decrease the, the size of uh, your uh, stateless application, you are about to kill some uh, stateful application, yeah. basically. Yeah. So basically, you are doing, you are splitting your cluster into two parts. Yeah. And maybe it's it not a good practice. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And the thing is, <coughs> it would be probably possible to uh, explore, for instance, the tags on the uh, on each. Yeah. Deploy node to see whether an application is uh, stateful or stateless. On may I destroy this node, for instance? But in this case, you have another issue, which is uh, fragmentation. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I got you have point. to repack the stuff. And I, I got to point. And oh wait, that just confirmed the point that I said that custom. There is no magic way to auto scale, right? Yeah. Um, it's just a way. And again, the easier 45 minutes way to do that. Um, but yeah, totally agree with you. Um, you, you can, I mean, on that code, I can add more, uh, let's say, smart way to, 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 to scale, like reading, like the, I don't know, the, the variables or whatever I want or the name or, but yeah, I'm totally agree with you with that. I mean, fragmentation is one point here and uh, maybe not the best way to do that, but again, 45 minutes talk. And are you doing auto scaling? Uh, yeah. No, but I did uh, similar stuff for uh, OpenStack a uh, long time ago. Okay. okay. So with the migration of VMs, it was easier because you, you could uh, yeah, 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 reallocate yeah. the stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I, just uh, a few remarks. Yeah. Uh, the first one is um, uh, there is the Marathon LB autoscale project, yeah. uh, which aims to scale uh, uh, application on top of Marathon. Uh, to me, your project is a good extension of that one uh, because Basically, when you're blocked uh, because of resources purpose uh, uh, to scale you up on top of the Mesos cluster, you can act at the uh, underlying level, meaning that you can uh, increase the, your cluster size. Yeah. Because you're blocked in increasing the number of instances uh, due to uh, resource uh, 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 leak. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Th that's a good point. And also the thing on, I mean, on, I know where where's Azure, right? Uh, I don't know about Amazon and other cloud provider, but the thing on the VM scale set, the idea of the VM scale set on Azure is to be able to automatically auto scale actually. So we, you have this magic switch button to, okay, auto scale for me. But the problem of that, it's Azure gonna read the, the CPU consumption of the VM by itself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be able to read like Marathon or, or Mesos, right? This is why we need that tool. Um, and yeah, I totally agree. I, I also saw this project. Um, and again, I'm not in the engineering team. That's also one reason. Uh, I, I, I'm not in the Microsoft Azure engineering team, right? My work is to engage with customers. So unfortunately, I don't have time to invest a lot of time on that project. I would love to. But, uh, but yeah, that's a really good point. OK, and the, the second remark was um, um, our intuition so far at Crito is that um, you have to gather uh, more business metrics to yeah. uh, start really doing uh, auto scaling. Uh, and if you want to push the thing uh, really far, uh, potentially you have to apply some machine learning uh, stuff on top of that. Yeah. Uh, meaning that you have to understand what's the pattern and to act upon uh, uh, conditions. Yeah, uh, and we know that executive people love dashboard, right? <laughs> Metrics. Mm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's I uh, agree. And I also like the talk uh, this morning about. Uh, I mean, I, I never heard about that before. You talk about the um, power bin or whatever. The, just the bin, bin, bin packing. Yeah, yeah. bin packing, yeah. and that's. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, the concept is awesome. I'm pretty sure that executive people would love that, <laughs> but it's. I think it's pretty tough metrics to reach, right? So to to gather. Um, I mean, to have the correct math on that and, and reach the, the correct... Uh, uh, oh yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, if uh, at some point we are able to do that, uh, for sure you have to uh, prepare this operation carefully and uh, also uh, have a lot of insight really uh, the, the, the yeah. business and, and your applications. Yeah, and I'm uh, curious which tool, I mean, or people, is open question, which tool are you using to offer the metrics? Are you using Prometheus or I don't know which, which yeah, Prometheus, yeah, here? Are the guys, no? Any? And do the raw way. No dashboard and... Uh, okay. Okay. 
And we also ingest a lot of logs and stuff into Splunk, um, into a okay, local yes, Splunk cluster. Okay. And that, that provides some useful metrics as well. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, so that's it for me, guys. Um, if you have other thing that you want to share or a question or whatever, no. So if you want to reach me, my Twitter, it's that one. Or I think you're going to be able to have the slide anyway, but just if you have any question. And if you are using or planning to use Azure, let me know. Um, uh, again, no worries, I have nothing to sell. I'm not in the sales part. But if you have nice technical challenge on Azure, let me know. Uh, I'm more than willing to, to, to come and help you with uh, awesome people from Microsoft uh, because what we want and what we like is challenges, actually. So that's just the, the, the idea of, the, of my team. It's, it's just to be challenged and just because we're going to be challenged, we're going to have like the tricky scenarios that we never see before and then it's going to be the better way to give feedback to the engineering team and to have the best product on the market, right? So that's how we work on, uh, on, on my team. So thank you very much for your time, guys. And uh, yeah, hope to see you after.